Good to see my trading buddies, my homies. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is May 13th. It's Monday. Now, we're going to do what we always do on this show. We're going to focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks, and you can find them on any market. And I'm constantly keeping my eye open for a stock that has heat, a stock that has potential to make us money. And yes, I came through today too. This is Plug, ticker P-L-U-G, Plug Power. I found her by looking at the charts, which is where I find most of my hot penny stocks. Because looking at charts, it's pretty easy to see heat. You can see a breakout setup. You can see a strong running surge. You can see big bounces. Well, when you see a chart that has heat, take the time to go through their press releases and filings. See if you can find a hot piece of news. You get a hot piece of information to match a hot chart, you got yourself a hot penny stock. And that's what we've got here. Plug has got a hot chart. Looking at the four hour, six month, we've got ourselves an atypical breakout. That's what I call it. That's when you got that 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious like a ski slope and you got the price deep underneath it. Then when that 200 starts to level out and go flat, the price turns up and starts to cut through that 200. And that's when you get a breakout. That's when you get your runs. And that's what we're looking at with plug. So I came over here looking for a catalyst. Well, there's nothing out today or yesterday, but we do have a catalyst. It's a little bit old, but it's huge news. It's still hot. Just because the catalyst isn't fresh doesn't mean it still hasn't got heat. We've got heat, folks. So plug, she finished the day at $2.87 and she's up just about 12.5%. Now this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. I love penny stocks on the major exchanges because they come with a lot of decent benefits. First off, all transactions are free. Buy your shares, sell your shares. It doesn't cost you anything, unlike the OTC. Plus you can trade every hour that the market's open pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC. There's a heck of a lot more money on the major exchange, a heck of a lot more volume, and a heck of a lot more rules, which is good for us. That keeps the BS down on the stocks that we're investing in. So what is Plug Power all about? Well, we don't have a description here, but we do have one in the most recent news press. And since we are out and about, once we get done with this description, we're just going to go headlong into the catalyst in the news. They tell us here that Plug is building an end-to-end -end green hydrogen ecosystem from production to storage to delivery and to energy generation to help its customers meet their business goals and decarbonize the economy. Now, they are working with the best hydrogen, green. You'll hear of blue, you'll hear of gray. What's the difference? Well, those colors signify how much CO2 they had to create to create their hydrogen. For example, say they were using an energy source of burning coal. Well, that would put a lot of CO2 off into the atmosphere. That would most likely be gray, hydrogen. If they were using electricity to do it, not as much CO2 is released, but still some, so that's going to be blue hydrogen. But if you're using, say, solar power or hydropower, there's no CO2 emissions there. That's going to be your best hydrogen, green, and that's what they're working with. In creating the first commercially viable market for hydrogen fuel cell technology, the company has already deployed more than 60,000 fuel cell systems and over 180 fueling stations, more than anyone else in the world, and they are the largest buyer of liquid hydrogen. With plans to operate a green hydrogen highway across North America and Europe, Plug built a state-of-the-art gigafactory to produce electrolyzers and fuel cells and is developing multiple green hydrogen production plants targeting commercial operation by year-end 2028. Plug delivers its green hydrogen solutions directly to the customers and through joint venture partners into multiple environments, including material handling, e-mobility, power generation, and industrial applications. Now, taking a look at that news and the catalyst, I told you it was a little bit old. It is. This came out March 14th, but it is still hot. The government is giving away money and they gave away a whole bunch to this company. 
The U.S. Department of Energy announced it would award $750 million in grants to 52 hydrogen projects across 24 states in an effort to drive down the cost of producing hydrogen. The Department of Energy has awarded grants totaling $75.7 million to Plug Power. The Latham-based Green Hydrogen Power Company currently constructing a production facility in Winnie Stamp in the town of Alabama. I do believe that's in New York up near Rochester. The company has also applied for a $1.6 billion low interest loan from the Department of Energy. The loan is still apparently under consideration. And I would think there is a good likelihood they could get that loan, so they're gonna have lots of money here. Plug Power is betting that hydrogen power will become a big winner in the race to develop clean renewable energy to sustain the economy and protect the environment in the coming decades. And that's what we're talking about here, folks. What was it, three years ago, four years, something like that, we were in the midst of COVID. We quit getting our critical minerals and metals, and we said we've got to do something about this. So we wanted to become self-reliant. And right on the heels of that, we decided to go from combustible engines to electric vehicles. So now we needed lithium as well. Well, we've only got one lithium mining company in America for the last 100 years. That's it, ticker ALB. Well, now we've got lots of lithium mining companies in America, a bunch, and they are huge, and they got lots of lithium to get out of the ground, but none of them are in operation, which is slowing down the progress for becoming self-sustaining in an EV nation. So I think hydrogen's gonna get a jump start here. I think we're gonna bypass EVs. It is gonna be a short transition. Let's face it, lithium is a finite resource. There's only so much of it. We have to keep going to different places, tearing up the earth to get it. Got to go through all that processing. Then we got to recycle it. Come on, isn't there a cleaner way? Yes, hydrogen. Hydrogen is a resource we will never run out of, folks. Every drop of water has hydrogen in it, and that's where we are primarily getting our hydrogen now. The Latham-based company specializes in green hydrogen which is the generation of hydrogen fuel using renewable energy, such as solar and hydropower. An apparent attraction of the wind stamp is the ability at that location to tap into the hydropower generated by Niagara Falls. Not only do they have all the water that they need, but they've got all the power that they need. Absolutely true when it comes to real estate and its value. It's all about location, location, location. PowerPlug's executives have set ambitious goals. They want to produce 2,000 tons of hydrogen daily by 2030. At that rate, the company hopes to generate $20 billion in annual revenue. And at that point, they hope to have profit margins of at least 30%. So by 2030, they're thinking that they can be at six to $7 billion worth of profit and generating $20 billion worth of business. And it's very possible, folks. They are one of the largest hydrogen companies in the country. They are growing fast. The government is backing them up. And there are lots of hydrogen vehicles and trucks just waiting to hit the roads. Now, how are they going to use that money? All right, they've got $75 million, something like that. Well, $45 million is going to be used on PEM stack manufacturing facility in Rochester, New York. The project will scale up manufacturing of proton exchange membranes, that's the PEM, electrolyzer stacks, to multi-gigawatt scale, driving down costs to meet DOE targets. Here's what we're talking about, folks. This PEM stack makes this hydrogen company completely different than every other hydrogen company out there that is creating their own hydrogen with electrolyzers. Electrolyzers are machines that split the water. They take the H2O, they get the H2s, the two hydrogens, and the oxygen separate. They send off that oxygen into the atmosphere, no harm there. Take that gaseous hydrogen, turn it into a liquid. Now, the thing here is, is that every electrolyzer in the world is being used with forever chemicals. I am talking about these dangerous chemicals that have gotten into our water supply and we can't get out. 
These are man-made poisonous chemicals that have broke down to such tiny molecules we can't filter them. They are in our water now. And all electrolyzers are using them except this company. And that's what the DOE is in investing in. They want to get these PEM stacks created, make a lot of these so we can get these out there rather than the other ones. Then they have the $30 million left over. This is for a project that is going to demonstrate a production pathway, a solution, a way to meet a projection for 2030 of creating 100,000 heavy duty fuel cell systems at a cost of $80 per kilowatt. The more we make, the cheaper it gets. So the government is helping these companies create more so that we can move into this a lot easier. Got one other piece of news here for you. This came out January. It's even a little older, but it gives you an idea of what this company's doing. They just aren't in New York. Plug Power Inc. has started operations of the largest liquid green hydrogen plant in the U.S. market. Located in Woodbine, Georgia, the plant is designed to produce 15 tons per day of liquid electrolytic hydrogen enough to power approximately 15,000 forklifts per day through eight five megawatt PEM electrolyzers, water is separated into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen gas is then condensed into a liquid form at minus 423 degrees Fahrenheit to be delivered to customers. Hydrogen fueling stations through Plug's logistics network using Plug cryogenic trailers. The company is doing substantial work on all other U.S.-based plants, including plants in Louisiana, New York, and Texas. So I knew about New York. We just heard about Georgia. They are also in Texas and Louisiana. And they're going to spread out, folks. We need hydrogen everywhere in this country. I like what I'm seeing with this. The fact that the DOE is backing them up and backing up their technology to get their technology out there is a very, very big deal. So I think this is a big enough catalyst to keep the stock running, especially since she is in a breakout point right now. A hot chart does not have to have a fresh catalyst, even a stale catalyst, as long as it's still got some heat. And this has definitely got some heat, folks. So let's go take a look at that stock now. So we're back here at the OTC markets, my stomping ground for research and due diligence for any stock. Doesn't matter if it's OTC or a major exchange. They got information for both here. So we are looking at Plug Power's relative volume over the last 30 days. She has been averaging about 30 million shares roughly, which is definitely not under the radar. But today she bumped that up nicely to over 50 million shares. Share structure for Plug. Ah, we got a lot of shares here, about 700 million. Don't know what the insiders own, don't know what the float is, except to say I know it won't be any higher than the outstanding share count, 684 million. Whew, thank God for that. Now it is going to be a little higher by the end of the year. I was reading that they want to put 70 million more dollars worth of shares on the market this year. And at current price, that's going to be like 22, 23 million more shares, which will put us up over 700 million. Market cap, not bad. We are currently at about $1.7 billion. Let's take a look at the financials for the company. Well, they are growing and growing nicely and quickly. 2020, now remember, we got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers on any of these charts. She wasn't doing good. She did $93 million in deficit, no positive revenues that year. 2021, she really bumps it up to over a half a billion dollars. 2022, they add on another 200 million, and by the end of 2023, we're closing in on $900 million. But look, folks, they're not making any profit. They're losing money every single year. Let's take a look at those quarterlies. Oh, all right. They were doing between 200 and 250 million every quarter, every three months. This last quarter, they dropped down to 120 million and they're still losing money. Thank God they're getting help from the government. And this is important, folks. Think of Tesla. Tesla was the first EV car in America to start building factories. It was very expensive, and I don't think they would have made it 
except that they got a lot of free money from the government in tax credits. And that's what this company's got going on now. They've got the country, the government backing them up. So I think they're going to be doing really, really well. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. Well, it's not looking bad. Cash in the bank, they've got about $392 million. Total assets, whoo, we're at $4.8 billion. Liabilities, oh yeah, we're under $2 billion in liabilities, which means though they're losing money, we have stockholder equity of virtually $3 billion in this company. That's a good foundation, folks. Disclosures, oh, we've had some new Form 4s come out. I've already looked at them. <laughs> these all have to do with restricted stock, and these down here, they're not purchases or sales either. See, these Form 4s are filed whenever the insider acquires or disposes of the company's stock. And they can do that in a lot of different ways, as I was just telling you. We're mostly interested when they buy them or sell them. Nothing of interest here. Except for that 10Q that just came out. This is their most recent financial. If you want to do some due diligence on this company, don't go running around like I did on Google trying to find information. Just dive into the most recent financial. It will have everything about this company from the day they incorporated. It's not just numbers. There's a lot of information in there. And feel free to use your search bar. If you only want to see current information, search 2024. See what comes up. So that takes care of everything we need to look at for plug, except for that chart, which is really what caught my attention in the first place. So let's do some charting. We're over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're looking at Plug Power, ticker PLUG. I got it opened up to a six month, four hour view, which tells a very sad story. She has been in a downtrend this entire time. Six months ago, we had a high of about $9, and it was in January we had a 52 week low of $2.18. Now, this was a very strange drop here. I'm not quite sure why it happened, but they always grab my attention. A strong surge or a big drop. I like to grab my Fibonacci and poke the extremities, the top and the bottom of the surge or the drop, and get myself these algorithmic supports and resistances. Now, these are not attached to any historical price points, but they're valid. We can trade on them. The price is going to respect them. I assure you of that. And they're going to come into play over here. So as you can see, she was in a serious downtrend underneath the 200, came down to this low bubble, and then shot directly to the 200 and shot over it, which makes complete sense to me because this is the first opportunity she's had. You don't try to break out when your 200 is falling. That's a slippery slope. You get up on top of there and try to stay there, you're just going to fall and it's going to look a lot like that. So you wait for it to go flat. Well, while she was down here, which is kind of a strange time for it to happen, the 200 leveled out. Well, she took advantage and jumped up there and she shot up high. Came down, bounced off the 200 a few times, slipped and fell. Came back up trying to recover and she couldn't do it and now we're down here. But now it looks like she's ready to recover and break out. And my biggest telltale sign isn't just that she's tapping on the door of the 200 day SMA, it's the 200 haul. This one down here, the purple blue one. I know most of you don't have this on your charts and you probably should because penny stocks really respect it. The 200 haul has as much authority, as much power as that 200 day SMA does. It takes 200 days of prices averages them all together, and then puts more credence on current prices so you end up with an entirely different long-term line on your chart that has as much authority as the 200-day SMA. And you will see over and over again, when the 200 haul turns up, the price turns with it. And in many cases, will actually bounce off of the 200 haul and go directly to the 200 day SMA and break out. And that's what we've got here. We've got a tag and a push off and now she is starting to run. Our volume has been getting stronger all of this time and all of our oscillators are looking good. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator is climbing. This is just like our MACD, looks the same, right? You want that blue line on top of the other one pushing up. The difference between the two, 
The MACD uses a full price. The percentage price oscillator, yes, uses a percentage of a price. And our RSI is leveled off, looking safe at 62 right now. This is a good chart, folks. There is the bottom of our Fibonacci. That's our very first resistance. And if I back up, you can see how strong this is. Look here, folks. All this weight is sitting on top of it. That is a strong support, but we're underneath it, so it becomes a resistance to us. We're going to have to break through that. The good news is, is that we've got to break the 200-day SMA to do that. Once we get over that, that's when we get a turbo boost, high octane fuel. This is when she'll start to push. Now we do have some resistances in here, but they're feather light, they're not real big. This is the one we're gonna have to break through. And when we do break through it, there's a lot of room for growth here from 321 to 394. And if you look over here, she has an average of 50 cents a pop coming off of this support right there. So. Breaking through the 200, high octane boost should push us to 321 and give us some room to climb. I'm liking the way this chart looks. Let's come on down to our 20 day, one hour view. Whew, look at that downtrend. Boy, she was coming down hard and fast. And right here, look folks, where did it happen? There's our 200 day haul. Soon as it got flat, we had a tag on to it and then she bounced where to? right through the 200, right up on top of it. Boink, she's come all the way back down. Actually, I like this spike. This spike has come deep down and then popped back up. Now, I like it before she popped back up because of this bounce here. We had a solid bounce and then a dip, which I consider a spike, a pillar. It's going down into the ground to solidify this tall monument she's about ready to build. This to me says, I think I want to climb hard. Well, she got back up on top, she took a bounce, and now she's starting to climb hard. You got to remember, each bounce is a test. We're just testing the ground, bouncing on it, making sure it's not going to rock and go anywhere. I got my dogs excited. And this thing bounced, and it looks good. She is climbing. Hitting a high today of $2.96, falling back not below her nine day SMA, and she is still pushing up after market hours. And our 200 day SMA is turned up as well. All of our SMAs are climbing right now. All of our oscillators are climbing except our RSI, which is at 67, which is still pretty bloody hot. Let's look at our five day, five minute. Whew, lots of volatility here, right? So we started back here at $2.72, went to $2.26, up to $2.96. Big bounces in here right now, folks. Look at that $200. I mean, she is getting zigzagged through here. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if another zag comes after this zig. She could easily keep this up, but she is breaking out on the four hour chart. The reason that becomes magical, folks, is because the 200 day SMA, the 50, the 20, and the nine, virtually everybody uses those. Not everybody, but most. So think of them as a signal, a street signal. Everybody comes up to a red light, we all hit our brakes. When that light turns green, when we're ready for a breakout, we all move at the same time because we're all looking at it at the same time. That's what gives it its power. And with this news, with all this free money coming in, Things are getting better and better for the company. They're not going to have any shortage on money. Whether it comes from public offerings or the government's grants, they are growing right now and they are the biggest in the country. Personally, folks, I like plug for a short run. I like it for a medium hold. I like it for a long hold. But of course, as I always say, do your own due diligence. I may have gotten some facts wrong. I may have missed stuff. You know I miss stuff. And you're the one investing. So you're the one that needs to be convinced. Validate my due diligence. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.